Uh, they include squid. They include cuttlefish, cephalopods. And finally, octopus or encephalopoda. Here's the taxonomy that you'll need to know. Nautiloidea, pretty simpler, but simple to remember. Those are the nautilus with the external shell. The only one with an external, with a shell on the outside. Uh, colloidea include the squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. The toothoidea, the octopoda, and the sepioidea. Okay, let's go through the general characteristics of cephalopods. They um, have an incredible ability to change their skin texture and color uh, with things called chromatophores. And if you go to uh, the uh, YouTube, um, you can get lots and lots of videos of uh, octopus changing their color and uh, same with cuttlefish. But if you go to um, this... TED Talk by David Gallo, um, and or the Chromatophores in Action. You could put that into YouTube as the, your search, or go to the uh, Moodle page, and you'll see uh, some amazing uh, footage. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. The uh, shell uh, of the Nautilus, the Nautiloids, is a chambered shell. It's got lots of chambers. They're the only ones with the, with with uh, shells on the outside. And if you see the one on the left, that's the uh, color of the of the shell and the appearance of it on the outside. Um, we get nautilus shells without the the chambers in uh, New Zealand washing up, but they're not actually true nautilus. They're an egg casing for a squid. Um, and you won't find those chambers within them. But if you look at the uh, chambers within this uh, Nautilus shell, uh, what you can see is that there's a little uh, tube that goes between the chambers. And the animal can regulate the amount of uh, air that is inside the, the, shelter, the, um, the shell. And that helps it... Uh, with buoyancy so they stay neutrally buoyant and they go up and down each night and uh, um, so during the day they hide out in the deeps in the night at nighttime they come up and and um, uh, they hunt in the in the cover under the cover of dark and then they go back down so if you can just use your buoyancy to um, uh, move you all that the seven or eight hundred meters you don't have to swim that far and it saves energy interestingly these things are limited to about 800 meters because after that the that's the crushing depth of the shell okay cuttlefish also have a bone it's called a cuddle bone sometimes they're sold as sort of a a treat for budgies to uh, pick at um and that is an internal bone. Squid have something called the pen, which gives them, helps them um, uh, have something to purchase onto for their muscles uh, in order to um, squeeze and drive the, uh, uh, drive the, uh, the mantle contraction so they can jet away. And also you can see the uh, length of the, um, the wider part is helps with fin muscle attachment. Uh, now, the pen is the thing that if you ever have cut squid for bait, you'll see that there's something that's a little bit hard, like a, a clear plastic on the inside of the the tube when you um, when you cut that uh, into sections for bait. And octopus, they don't actually have a shell. So they can squeeze through anything that their beak can fit through, really. Uh, they're incredible um, escape artists and can, uh, well, you have to be very careful when you're designing a, a tank for an octopus.
because they'll go right up the uh, the tank the the uh, tubes to the filters that will end up hurting themselves. Okay. <clears throat> terms of suckers and arms we know that the muscular foot has specialized into the arms and uh, the arms have suckers okay the nautilus have uh, many more than other cephalopods up to 90 arms octopus generally have eight arms uh, with suckers they always have suckers <clears throat> and these things are individually manipulatable, so they can relax or contract every individual sucker. Um, squid and cuttlefish have eight arms and two hunting tentacles. So the tentacles are held within the eight arms, and then they shoot out to grab the, um, the prey item. Okay, and... The, finally, the uh, squid have the same setup as the cuttlefish, but their, uh, ho their suckers are, have hooks or teeth on them, and these are for grasping prey, and probably because they are a more um, uh, what it, a pelagic animal that uh, is chasing prey around uh, like fish and the like. Uh, probably need a very need to be able to grip things quite well, um, and here's a picture of a uh, squid with its long hunting tentacles uh, shot out. Now the thing at the end is called the tentacular club, and that's the only place um, that the uh, suckers have hooks or teeth. So here is another image of the tentacular club. Okay, and they're long, extendable uh, tentacles that shoot out, and they've got lots of suckers on the end. They're a little bit widened. And if you have a look at a squid, you'll be able to see the tentacular clubs. All right, movement. So they all uh, are able to use jet propulsion by squeezing water out of the siphons. So the mantle is the same thing as the tube. The mantle is evolved into the round tube to the left of the, uh, uh, what you're looking at is the eye and the, and the, and the siphon. And the um, mantle can fill up with water and then quickly squeeze it out this tube, this siphon, and that will jet them in the opposite direction. And then the octopus and cuttlefish use the fins that they have for swimming. Okay. The fins along the, the side of the mantle. The cuttlefish go all the way around the length of the, the mantle, and the squid tend to have them uh, up, at the, uh, up at the top. Okay, all in terms of feeding, all of them have a parrot-like beak, which uh, you can see quite easily here. And if you look at the, um, the striated bit on the inside of the uh, mouth, <clears throat> what you can see is that it's, um, well, it's a radula, just like we saw in, uh, in gastropods um, and, and polyplacophora. Okay, so that radula will, once the uh, parrot-like beak tears off a chunk of flesh, will uh, scrape it into smaller portions for digestion. And they also have a modified um, salivary glands. They have modified salivary glands on each side, which are poison glands. Um, so everything but the Nautilus can use ink to uh, distract predators as they jet away. They'll leave an ink cloud, cloud which will be a little bit of a, uh, conf will cause confusion for a predator. And they all have a big ink sack. Uh, for copulation, 
Um, generally, the male transfers spermatophores to the female, um, which uh, can be very violent in some squid, where they'll go up and um, actually use one of their tentacles to just drive a, a packet of sperm into the mantle of the uh, female. They'll go up and just uh, uh, catch the female by the mantle with their arms, uh, hold on, and just drive a, uh, a bit of uh, a packet of sperm in. And okay, so then they're generally. Um, Attached to the substrate, although some squid have planktonic eggs. Um, so then here's what you're most likely to see in New Zealand. These are a type of squid egg. Okay. There's um, another octopus eggs that are they'll be tended by the by the female octopus, and essentially she doesn't eat. She just tends these and until they hatch, and then she winds up dying. She starves herself to death to take care of those animals. And here's the development inside one of them. Oh. Okay, and that's where you get the little baby cuttlefish.